Ever since that third little piggy foiled the big bad wolf by building a house made entirely of brick, we humans have developed an appreciation for that which is resistant to huffing and puffing, or whatever else might conspire to blow our house down. Never mind its impact on fairy tales, the impact of brick on modern construction and civilized life as we know it, it's mind-boggling. Tonight, I'm excited to introduce you to a company that I had the pleasure of working with years ago. At Old Carolina Brick, they still do things the old-fashioned way, by hand, one brick at a time. You will be gobsmacked by the sheer number of bricks that Old Carolina churns out every day, and you'll be inspired by the hard work that goes into making sure that we have enough supply to meet our insatiable demand. Prepare yourself for another example of hard work, skilled labor, and time-tested ingenuity that's still alive and well here in the 21st century. Another brick in the wall, if you will, a wall of incredible strength and resilience whose unique construction demonstrates, one more time, how America works. For the past, oh, 10,000 years, the humble brick has been a literal keystone to our civilization, which is pretty impressive for what basically amounts to a five pound hunk of clay. But put them together and the most wondrous creations begin to take shape, like cathedrals, bridges, skyscrapers, and the countless other creations that surround our everyday existence. And though these days we're pretty spoiled for choice when it comes to building materials, some of the best you'll find out there are still brick. That might explain why, in the midst of a recent building boom, the 38 brick manufacturers of our nation are shaping, firing, and shipping out as many as they can muster. But very few of them do that, like Old Carolina Brick Company. Here, a team of 55 workers still take the time and energy to make bricks the same way it's been done for millennia, all by hand. And in spite of that approach, they're still able to crank out about 30,000 of them per day. But thanks to the building boom, they're also struggling to fill a sizable back order. And to pull it off, they'll need to churn out a much more ambitious 40,000 bricks before quitting time. And at the forefront of getting all that done is pug mill operator Chino Castillo, who will move more than 100,000 pounds worth of product in a single shift. It's a new day. You're going to start the machine, and we're going to start making some bricks. It's a process that hasn't changed much over the years, but here's how it's done at Old Carolina. First, a mixture of rock and soil is blended into a uniform clay. From there, it's extruded and sliced into what are known as slugs, which are thrown into molds holding eight bricks apiece. Then, a machine scrapes off the excess before the bricks are dried, and finally, fired. It's a system through which workers here can create about 7,000 bricks per hour, and it's up to Chino to ensure they have plenty of raw material to work with. See, all this material is uh, shell and clay, and, and uh, it comes to make uh, the color for brick. Mixing shale with red clay and water also results in bricks strong enough to withstand 5,000 pounds per square inch, but only if the proportions are exactly as they should be. Fortunately for his colleagues, Chino is something of an expert in that area. You get too much water, you're gonna be you get too wet and uh, complain on the throw. It's gonna be too wet. You get too dry, you're gonna be hard to throw. So you need to, you need to put uh, attention what he's doing on the, the mix. For that, Chino doesn't trouble himself with measuring ingredients. Instead, he can churn out 15,000 pounds of clay per hour strictly by feel. Yeah, if he's got too much water, you need to be Put some of this material, just put it that way. See that? And, and close the water. Close the water for a little bit, and then and open and put some material, get it, get it right. 
but keeping every new batch of clay up to standard requires near constant supervision and, when needed, adjusting. You can see this, uh, you get it drier and you have to add it more water. So I need to add more water. Yeah, it's getting better now. It's getting better, it's getting uh, make better now. While Chino continues his pug mill mixology, further down the line, the throwers and molders of Old Carolina are already hard at work shaping and drying the product needed to fill today's back order. And once that's done, those bricks will be fired at 2,000 degrees, a process that'll result in maximum strength and hardness. It's the most essential step when it comes to making bricks that are fit for building. And nobody can appreciate that more than Wes Brady. I'm a kill fireman here at Old Carolina Brick. Uh, that's the guy who watches all the brick cars that have to come through, put them in, take one out every two hours, make sure that everything's straight and not falling. That's the way we like to see it right there. It's a system that'll roll out 12,000 pounds of freshly fired brick every couple of hours. And when that happens, it's up to Wes to ensure that the next load goes in on schedule. That is, once he's got it all prepped. I'm uh, insulating the front of the steel car with insulation. This grease just holds it in place, kind of like a glue. And uh, this prevents cold air from coming in between the cars, nice and hot up top. All the cool air stays below it. And other than that, it's just ready to be put in. Well, not quite. Because Wes will also need to give these bricks a final inspection, lest they fall out of line and risk toppling the whole stack. A lot of times, these bricks are turned sideways just from being pushed down the line. And they'll walk out like that and it has the potential to, to fall. So every car I put in, I examine, make sure this is nice and straight. They like to walk sideways. So it's really important that they're nice and tight, straight, not like that one. That's an accident waiting to happen. So we just make sure that's nice and tight, straight. If that was to be left out like that, it would definitely wreck inside and, and fall down. And with the rest of these bricks all in their proper place, it's time to send this car into the kiln. I raise the door, and uh, when it gets to the top, we just let the hydraulic come out, and it grabs hold of the car and drags it in. So that'll be pushed up a whole car length in two hours, and then it'll retract and be sitting here waiting on me for the 10 o'clock car. While Wes gets back to his rounds, not far away, another of Old Carolina's workers is starting on a more specialized project. Because while the bulk of the bricks made here tend to be, well, brick-shaped, there are clients who order ones that are not, and that's where specialty brick shaper Juan Carrillo comes in. Well, the specialty shapes, you know, are things like we have here on the table. We got the duck, we got the pineapple, and like, you know, they're a little bit tricky to make, but you can see like, you know, they just match perfect with the mold, and like, people like them a lot. Actually, people like them so much that Juan and his colleagues will throw bake and deliver about a thousand specialty bricks every day. First though, they'll need a good bit of clay to work with. We have to get this every day, you know, to start making our shakes. So we just get in there and after we finish here, we just take it back to my department and start working on our, on our shakes. Today, Juan will be creating one of Old Carolina's more popular items, one they've had on offer for the past 20 years or so. I got a special order for a, a canoe which is a, a very, a very difficult, you know, shape to make. It consists of three molds. So, where is it, where is it? Uh, 
But with 3,500 molds in storage, just locating the right ones can be a challenge all its own. We get all these orders, we got all these molds, you know, it's hard to pinpoint them, you know. Oh, yeah, this is it right here. This is one of them. See, it's a canoe right here. With the back mold found, the middle and front shouldn't be far. But while gathering those up, something else seems to be missing. Oops. I got a problem on this one. You know, see this one got a band, this one doesn't. Well, there's a chance that the mold might explode when I throw the mud in here. So I'm going to have to fix this before I start making any 